Hola clase. Today we're going to review what is going to be included in the final, okay? We're going to start with the vocabulary because the first um, section of the final is going to be all about vocabulary, very much like the midterm. So you should study uh, vocabulary related to familia, directions, so how to give directions um, for example, how to say go left, go right, go straight, that type of thing. Parecido, this was with uh, family. Uh, who are you like in your, uh, in your family? Um, and in fact, we have a, a homework on that. So you should remember that. Um, vocabulary related to cars, coche, uh, transporte. So we learned... Um, vocabulary related to transportation as well as clima y geografía so climate and geography and then in chapter 12 we learned everything about the the human body health um, illnesses remedies and so on regarding uh, verbs we have those in every chapter so you should learn those for every chapter because even if uh, well actually some of them might be in the vocabulary but they're gonna appear throughout so you should know what they mean okay so let us go with the grammar oh before i go into grammar um if i go to chapter 10 the first thing that you'll see in chapter 10 is a bit about Cuba. We actually had a, a video uh, about Cuba. We, we watched a video about Cuba. And um, the other culture video that we watched was on Venezuela. So expect five questions on those two topics. Okay, so now that we've talked about culture, let's go to grammar. So if we go to chapter 10 and you go to grammar, take a look at the imperfect tense, okay? Uh, the imperfect tense is very easy. As you can tell, if a verb ends in AR, just get rid of the AR at the end and add any of these endings. So for example, if you wanted to say, I used to drive, you would say, yo manejaba. So you would be adding that aba. Tu manejabas. Usted de Lelia manejaba, and so on. And they give you the endings here. If it ends in er, like comer, or ir, like vivir, then you add ia. Comía, comías, comía, and so on. And take a look. Both of them, ER and IR, same endings. So pretty easy, right? There are three verbs that are irregular. Ir, ser, and ver. You should know this. Talking about past actions in progress, the imperfect progressive. So for this one, this is pretty easy too. All you're going to need is you're going to need to know estar in the imperfect. So, yo estaba, tú estabas, él estaba, nosotros estábamos, ellos, ellas estaban. And then, you're going to add a verb in the progressive tense. And for that, you just add ando if the verb ends in AR, or you add yendo if it ends in ER or IR. Okay? So, for example, hacer would turn into haciendo. Mirar, mirando. Okay? Because hacer ends in ER, so therefore, you're going to take out ER and add yendo. All right, so to recap, imperfect progressive is made up of two verbs. One of them is always going to be estar in the imperfect tense, and then you're going to add another verb in the progressive. To make it into the progressive, what you're going to do is you're going to add ando, if it's an AR ending verb, and you're going to add yendo, if it, is, if it ends in ER or IR. Now, 
Uh, let's see. Some of them are irregular and they have changes in the participle. This progressive, the, uh, the one that ends in ando yendo, is called a participle. And they give you some here. Okay? You should know those. All right. Then let's move on to the last part of the grammar here. Using the imperfect to express intention. So if, if you wanted to say in the past, oh, I wanted to do this. I was planning to do this. I was going to do this. Then you're going to be using one of these verbs in the imperfect. Okay. So what about ir in the imperfect? Yo iba, tu ibas, el iba, nosotros íbamos, ellos iban. Now, if you're going to use it with ir to say I was going to, Remember, you need to add that a, ir a, and then you're going to add an infinitive, okay? So, if I wanted to say, I was going to eat, I'm going to do this one in the imperfect, yo iba a, and to eat remains in the infinitive. So, you're going to say, yo iba a comer, querer. I wanted to study. Querer, you're going to make it into the imperfect. Yo quería. And then you are going to add your next verb in the infinitive. Yo quería estudiar. Okay? Since you're already conjugating this in the imperfect, the verb that goes next to it, you don't need to conjugate it. Leave it in the infinitive. What's an infinitive? A verb that is not conjugated. How do you know that it's not conjugated? It ends in AR, ER, or IR. I was planning to do something. Pensaba estudiar. So pensar, make it into the imperfect, and then add an infinitive, estudiar. Okay, that brings us to the end of the grammar on chapter 10. Let's move to chapter 11. Here we go. Present perfect. For this tense, you need two things. Two verbs. You need haber in the present tense and you need a second verb in the past participle. What's the past participle? I'll explain in a minute. But first, let's take care of this first part. Haber, you need to know that conjugation in the present tense. Yo he, tú has, ustedes, ella, a, nosotros, hemos, ustedes, ellos, ellas, han. Okay? So, if you know how to conjugate haber in the present tense, hey, you got that half of the question already done. Okay? Now, it's going to go next to another verb. How do we make it into the past participle? Easy. If it ends in ar, add ado. Ado, like ado. For example, viajar, take out the ar and add Ado, viajado. I have traveled. Yo he viajado. Let's say estudiar. Estudiar ends in AR, so I'm going to add ado, estudiado. You have studied. Tú has estudiado. And so on. Okay? Now, what happens in, if the second verb ends in ER or IR? Well, in that case, you add ido, I-D-O. So, for example, let's say uh, sentir, okay? Sentir to feel. Uh, I have felt. In that case, you would conjugate haber in the present tense, yo he. Now, sentir ends in I-R. Therefore, you're going to add not ado, you're going to add ido. Yo he sentido. Now, there are some uh, past participles that are irregular. I gave you a list. And here's the list. Now, these guys are irregular. Why are they irregular? Because they don't follow the rule that I just gave you. You don't just add ado or ido depending on their ending. They don't follow rules. Therefore, you have to memorize them. For example, abrir, I have opened. You wouldn't say yo he abrido. 
you will say yo he, and then take a look at your list here, abierto, okay? Another example, poner, to put yo he puesto, not ponido, puesto, okay? So make sure that you are familiar with this list so that uh, you know that this list, you don't, you don't just add ado or ido to, to these verbs, they have their own endings that don't follow the rule. And they give us some more here. So make sure you learn those. Okay, so that, that is that for the present perfect. Let's go to the polite commands. Polite commands. A polite command is uh, when you tell somebody what to do. Now, if they are your friends, there's a way in Spanish that you tell them what to do. Um, it's informal, okay? However, and many of you I know may already know that form, but in this chapter, we are learning the formal commands, also known as the polite commands. These are the commands that you would give to somebody who is older or maybe in a, uh, in a job situation at work, you would use the formal or polite commands. So these are the ones that we're learning. <clears throat> I'm gonna skip por and para. I think I added just one or two questions on por and para. And if I remember correctly, they are um, extra credit. But let's go to the polite commands because you will have a section on these. These are pretty easy, okay? So the way you do it is you're always gonna be giving a command to either one person or more than one person. First, let's learn how to give a command to one person. If the verb ends in AR, you're going to add E. For example, hablar, hable. So if I wanted to say to you, please speak, I would say, por favor, hable. That's when, when I'm talking to one of you. If I'm talking to all of you, then I would just add that N in there. Please speak, all of you. Hablen, por favor. Okay? Now, if, it, if the verb ends in ER, I'm going to add an A. So, for example, comer, coma. So, if let's say that I'm talking to one of you, I will say, por favor, coma. Please eat. But let's say that we organized a uh, potluck and I will say, hey, please eat, all of you. Then in that case, I will say, coman, okay? So when you're doing this section in the test, find out first if you're talking to one person or many, more than one. If you're talking to one person, you know what to do, just add E or A, depending on what the ending is. And if you're talking to more than one person, make sure that you add that N. Um, there are some irregulars, and they are listed here. Venir, vengan, salir, salgan, and a few more. Conozcan, oigan, digan, pongan, hagan, vengan, den, estén, sepan, sean, vaya, vayan. Now, what happens to stem changing? If a verb was stem changing, they're still stem changing. If the verb ends in sar, car, or gar, then the verb is gonna undergo a spelling change when you make it into the polite command. The z is gonna change to c. The c is going to change to uh, q, u and the G is gonna to change to G-U, okay? To preserve that, the original sound of the, of the verb. Okay, so that's that for polite commands. And then we're gonna go into uh, preterite and imperfect together. So, as you know, you use a preterite tense to express something that has happened in the past but that has happened one time and it's done or a series of actions. 
you use the imperfect to say, to talk about something that you used to do. Okay, so it was habitual in the past. For example, let's say every summer we would go visit my grandma. Cada verano visitábamos, I'm using the imperfect, a mi abuela because it's in the past and it was habitual. Okay, um, you also use the imperfect to to describe a background. So if I say, era de noche, it was night. Era muy oscuro, I'm still using imperfect. Llovía, it was raining, I'm still describing. So if you're describing a background, then you use imperfect. Now, there's one instance where you will have them together in, um, you're gonna have them together in a sentence. And that is when something was happening therefore if something was happening that's kind of like, like the background you're going to use the imperfect for the background and then something happened that interrupted what was going on in that case for the interrupting action you're going to use the preterit the preterit tense okay so an example would be um yo leía i was reading, yo leía, therefore, imperfect, right? Because that was the ongoing action, that was the background. Yo leía, un libro. Cuando, when, alguien, somebody, tocó la puerta. So, that somebody knocking on the door interrupted my reading, so therefore, I'm gonna use for that interrupting action, the, imp uh, the preterite, okay? So, ongoing action, imperfect. Interrupt in action, predate it, okay? And I already mentioned that you have a couple of questions on por and para. Then you're gonna have a reading section. For that one, just remember, you don't need to understand everything in the, in the reading as long as you understand the gist of it. Make sure that you take advantage of the cognates, meaning if there are words that are similar to English, that's probably what they mean. Uh, they probably have the same meaning. And so you'll, you'll be answering questions about a reading. Um, and then, of course, you're gonna have a, a writing composition section, which I'm gonna give you the prompts now, um, or on Blackboard rather, so that you can prepare them in advance, okay? I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna ask you for a minimum number of original sentences, meaning please don't go to Google Translate or one of those and enter what you're uh, wanting to say and then copy paste because when you do that, you're gonna be using tenses that you may not know yet. And those tenses that you don't know yet those are not going to count, okay? So your 12 sentences, if you use Google Translate and used uh, tenses that we didn't learn, they may go down to 10 or eight, or I don't know, maybe less, because I'm not gonna count those tenses that we haven't learned. And you don't wanna do that because for each missing sentence, you're gonna lose points, right? So just make sure that you use what you know. You can use the present tense, present progressive. You can use the imperfect, the preterite, the imperfect progressive. You can use the present perfect. You know, just make sure that you know, you use the tenses that uh, we have learned. Also moving on to another topic, let's talk about the oral final. For the oral final, I already gave you the prompts. There were four questions. You're gonna need to do two of those questions and um, I'm gonna assign two questions according to last name, okay? Uh, so make sure that you're doing the questions that are assigned to you uh, per your last name. Um, and please make sure that you do the, you complete the oral final because the oral final that has a value of 15% of your grade. 
So if for some reason you fail to complete that one, you're going to lose 15% of your grade, which is, is not a good thing. Uh, let's see, what else? I think that's it. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll add some resources uh, for you to study, but I've already listed the sections that you should be uh, studying. And so you have a grammar section, and that's the ones that I've been going over. Um, look at those, study those. If you have any questions uh, before the exam, please don't hesitate to let me know. Other than that, good luck in the exam. Uh, I feel like I know you because I've seen you in the oral uh, exam. I wish you guys uh, luck in the rest of your finals as well. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm here. Just reach out. Adios.